Being a police officer anywhere can be a dangerous job. But in Northern Ireland, where more than 300 officers were killed during the troubles and the terrorist threat is still the highest in the UK, it carries serious risks. We've been speaking to police officers whose data was included in these breaches. And just to remind you, there are more than 10,000 of them. They've told us how what happened is already impacting their lives. One officer said he's now leaving Northern Ireland, even though he is devastated to do so. We're not revealing his identity for security reasons. And his words are spoken by a BBC producer. It's getting to the point that my wife feels she is no longer comfortable in Northern Ireland. And we made the decision last night to move. I suppose you could say this is a straw that broke the camel's back. It's just not a place going forward that I have confidence or trust in anymore. Policing staff were on this list too. One woman told us that she's kept her job a secret for 40 years. Even chats with people on holiday, your hairdresser inevitably will ask where you work. And throughout a very long career, I've always had to make up the answers in relation to that. And I suppose the disappointment for me is that I've gone to all that trouble and yet now there is something out there in the public domain. All PSNI officers are targets for terrorists. But in the past, dissident Republicans who are against the peace process have often targeted Catholic officers. Jerry Murray has been a police officer for 50 years and represents hundreds of Catholic officers who he says have particular concerns over the data leak. They've been targeting Catholic officers for quite a considerable amount of time and I suppose they are trying to obstruct the eventuality of normal policing like it would be in Hampshire, whether it be in Hearn Bay and Kent, um, they are trying to, to hold on to the past. Echoes of the past in Northern Ireland have never gone away, but the PSNI data breach has left all police officers here and their families extremely fearful of the future. Sarah Garvin, BBC News, Belfast.